In the Wrigley Gardens at the Tournament House, you can stroll among the flowers and observe several roses with famous namesakes, Julia Child, Barbara Streisand, Marilyn Monroe, and Dick Clark. But on October 10th, a gorgeous new pink and yellow tea rose was unveiled and added to the collection, one named in honor of Dr. Jane Goodall and developed in partnership with Jackson and Perkins. Well, one is absolutely beautiful and somehow I, I always was in, under the impression it was red and this pink is so much for me more beautiful, more delicate and it's got a lovely fragrance so it's an enormous honour to have this beautiful flower with my name associated. It's, it's fabulous. At the tender age of 26, Dr. Goodall left her home in England to study wild chimpanzees in Tanzania, a world that was relatively unknown. By immersing herself in their habitat, she made groundbreaking revelations about their behaviors and personalities, as well as the discovery of their creation and use of tools. Years later, Dr. Goodall is a global leader in conservation, having founded the Jane Goodall Institute and the international youth program Roots and Shoots, and becoming a UN messenger of peace. So in the spring, this will be in the UN Peace Garden, and boy does the world need peace. So. Little Rose, you have a lot of work ahead of you. Uh, we're also uh, contributing a portion of the sale of each rose to her institute, and we're honored to do that. It's beautiful, it will make many people happy, many people smile, and it will not only give me joy to look at, but hopefully help JGI to do some of our programs around the world. Well, the mission of the Jane Goodall Institute, put simply, is to make the world a better place for animals, people, and the environment. But of course, uh, a main focus is continuing the research of the chimps at Gombe, uh, conserving them and chimpanzees in six other African countries. And in order to protect the chimpanzees, we have to work with the local people to bring them out of, of, out of poverty and so that they become our partners in conservation. And all of this is hard work. All of this requires raising a lot of money. And what's the point of any of it if we're not raising new generations to be better stewards than we've been? And so our Roots and Shoots program for young people from kindergarten, university, everything in between is now in 100 countries. It's got about 150,000 active groups, not members, but groups. And it's basically has a message Every individual matters. Every single individual makes a difference of some sort every single day, and we have a choice as to what sort of difference to make. And each group between them, they choose. We don't, it's not something where we give information. It's, uh, of course, we provide information, but then the youth chooses three projects, things that make them passionate to help people, to help animals, to help the environment. And running through this, which is so important today, is let's break down the barriers between people of different nations, different cultures, different religions, and between us and the natural world. If you think about the consequences for future generations of every choice that you make, and that's something everybody can do. You know, if you see litter, do you pick it up or leave it? If you see a stray dog that's obviously lost and homeless, do you just drive by or do you try and rescue it or report it? And things like that. When I first got involved in the scientific world, because I'd never been to college when I went to Gombe, and was told that I shouldn't have given the chimps names, they should have had numbers, and I couldn't talk about their personality, minds or emotions, those were unique to us. And it was thought that there was a difference in kind, and a barrier between us and all the rest of the animal kingdom. But fortunately, even though I hadn't been to college and was rather in awe of these erudite professors, I had a teacher when I was a child who taught me that in this respect they were wrong, and that teacher was my dog. You can't share your life in a meaningful way with a dog, cat, rabbit, horse, pig, bird, I don't care what it is, and no, of course they have personalities, minds, and emotions. We are not the only beings with those attributes. And now science has opened its doors and young people can 
study the intelligence of the octopus. They can study the intelligence of some insects. And they can study the communication between trees and plants. When I was 10 years old, I read Tarzan of the Apes, fell in love with Tarzan, who stupidly married the wrong Jane, but anyway, it was when my dream began. I will grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. Everybody laughed at me. How will you do that? Don't have any money, Africa's far away. Girls don't do that sort of thing. But my mother didn't. She said, if this is what you really want, you're going to have to work awfully hard and you're going to have to take advantage of opportunity and never give up. And so that's the advice I give to young people. And I say to them, you know, don't just think about making money and more money and more money. Make enough money to live, but don't live for money. And if you want to go into some career which won't make you wealthy, if it's what your heart is passionate about, you will be happy.